tools. I know I love them. Today I'm gonna go through my top 10-ish tools that I use that uh, I've acquired over the years that helped me do my job a little bit better and uh, I just wanted to share them with you. Tool number one, the totally underutilized, totally underrated uh, label maker. Uh, this is a Brother P-Touch, um, it's a model they don't sell anymore. It's a PT-1500, I think it's called. Uh, you can get newer models of this. This one's about four years old now. Uh, I just gotta tell you, this was one of the first things that was drilled into me when I first uh, entered the IT arena. And I gotta tell you, it's one of the best practices. If you're looking to implement a best practice in your IT consulting business or uh, just as a tinkerer, I mean, you can use this to label your own home network, but some of the examples of things that I label with this, I mean, I label every network meticulously and it has served me so well. So one of the things that you can do with this is label power cords. So when you have a battery backup that you have multiple servers and workstations and NAS devices and firewalls and all these other things plugged into, sometimes you gotta yank the plugs on this stuff if you're moving a single device or if you have to kind of like hard reboot something. And look, I've done it a couple times where I accidentally unplugged the wrong device and maybe you take a server down and you know, it's like, oops, you know, uh, that's no fun. So labeling uh, power cords so you know which one's which so you'll always pull the right one. Uh, labeling obviously IP addresses on printers and servers and all that kind of stuff. Even uh, label putting uh, host names on workstations so you know which one's which. Um, what are some other things that you can label? Uh, I mean, even around the house, uh, labeling like your fuse box and stuff like that. It's such a useful device. I really can't emphasize enough how useful this is in, in the IT field and also um, just in life in general. And I always know when I walk into a network and I see it meticulously labeled that I can kind of trust whoever was here before me did a good job. 99.9% um, .9 of the times I walk into a, it's a total train wreck, everything's a mess, nothing's labeled, nothing's documented, and that's what people hire me to come in and fix. Okay, tool number two. This is a StarTech uh, SATA to USB, it's called a duplicator. You can see it's a USB 3 in the back, and uh, what else? I mean, just a, just, you know, just a power cable. It does have an eSATA connection, I've never used that. But basically this does two things. One is if you just plug a single hard drive in here and they can, it's two and a half or three and a half. So you can put, you know, an old school mechanical big hard drive or you can put a smaller two and a half drive in here, like a, a solid state or a laptop hard drive. Uh, you can put a single drive in here, connect it to your computer via USB and you can grab data off that single drive or uh, what's super useful is to put two drives in here. You switch the mode to copy and uh, you just have to be careful about which is your source drive. It, and it does tell you right here that um, hard disk two is your source and hard disk one is your target. Make absolutely sure you get that right. Uh, and then you can just press a clone button. You can clone hard drives with this. So, I mean, it's like, you know, they range from 100 to 120 bucks. Um, I'll be happy when they come out with one for NVMe hard drives because I have a video now, it's actually my most watched video where I struggle with cloning an NVMe drive and there's still really not an easy way to do it. Uh, NVMe duplicators are like five, five grand. Um, but anyway, for your SATA needs, great tool, absolutely indispensable, I use it all the time and uh, you know, great, just a great tool. Okay, so number three, we're gonna talk about the iFixit, um, kit, it's like the professional laptop repair kit. Uh, and this is, a, this is a good kit. It's got a lot of great tools in it uh, for fixing laptops and mobile phones and that kind of thing. It's got little uh, plastic like, you know, scalpels that you can use as separators to pry the back of a laptop off or to pry phones apart without completely destroying the plastic. And that is a thing. Uh, if you've ever tried to, you know, pull those things apart with, especially with tools that you find around the house, you'll absolutely kill them. It's got tons of torque bits, tons of small screwdriver bits. Um, what else has it got? I mean, it comes with like, you know, an ESD band. I never use those, but um, it's got a lot of good uh, small screwdrivers and, and things like that in it. And, and then it comes in a nice plastic uh, carrying case as well. Um, but I will just kind of as a caveat tell you that I have gotten by my entire IT career with two, uh, two or three things I bought at Home Depot and they cost a fraction of what um, 
this iFixit kit costs. One of them is just, uh, and I got some little screws in here that I must have stashed away. One of them is just a Husky precision school screwdriver kit. I got this at Home Depot for six bucks. I have disassembled a trillion laptops with this thing. Uh, and uh, it has never failed me and it works perfectly fine. It's got three flat heads and three Phillips heads and they're just the right size for pretty much any small screwdriver job that you might have. Uh, and this I think is like six bucks at Home Depot. Uh, now, in addition to that, you're gonna need, uh, also I bought at Home Depot, it's a Husky and it's like, again, it's like six bucks. I have like 10 of these. I have 10 of those precision screwdriver kits. I have one in the truck, one in my bag, one at home and you know, a couple of extras just in case. Same with this is the Husky. Now this is a Torx bit. I don't know if you can see. Uh, that's a Torx bit and then in the back, you can stash a couple of, of extra Torx bits. And they're all those small sizes that you run into with both desktops and laptops, because sometimes desktops have them too. Uh, and I can tell you for 12 bucks, oh, one other thing, absolutely indispensable. And this is, you can get these at Home Depot, you can get them online. Uh, it's just a, uh, a screwdriver where you can switch, you know, you can switch this way. And then if you flip it out, you got a bigger Phillips head and, uh, uh, what is it called? And also a bigger um, Phillips head and flat head. So you, it's like a four in one. It's actually a six in one. There's some additional tools in here that I don't even know. Uh, I, I, it doesn't matter to me. Um, but for basically like under 20 bucks, you can get that precision screwdriver kit. You can get that little Torx thing uh, and you can get that screwdriver. And I'm telling you, that'll get you through 99.9% .9 of IT jobs right there. So if you want to spend a bunch of money, you can get the uh, iFixit kit. It does have a couple of nice extras in it, but you know, if you're just starting out or you're looking for the cheap way to do this, you know, for 20 bucks, you can pretty much get everything you need to work on laptops and desktops. Here's another thing. I don't even know what this is called. If you know what this is called, please leave it for me in the comments because I'd like to buy a backup of this. And what this is, is a little, um, grabber thing. I don't know if you can see the little arms coming out of it. And this has saved my ass so many times. I got this in my very first, it was like baby's first IT starter, you know, care pack. And you know, it came with a bunch of little tools. It was like 20 bucks. I don't, you know, I bought it literally in like 2007. And um, I have rescued so many screws, especially when I'm building like a gaming build, like a gaming desktop or a video editing desktop. I mean, you're always putting in screws and you drop them all the time. So this is actually good for two things. One is for rescuing screws that you dropped into a system. I actually, I don't know what I do without this because I've used it so many times. Uh, and the other thing is that you can actually use it to get a screw started. So you can stick a screw in here and grab it and then just use it to get started. Sometimes you have an awkward angle where you just can't fit your fingers in and this will uh, this will get you in there. So again, I don't know what this is called. Uh, I don't know who makes it. It has no name or branding or anything on it. Uh, but if you know what these are called, please leave it in the comments because I wanna buy two or three more. These is the only one I've ever had and if it broke, I don't know what I'd do. So here's another tool. Uh, I guess we're up to four now. Uh, this is the, um, it's called a cage nut puller and, or a cage nut tool. And it's made by, uh, I think it's, I think it's Starcase. I did get this on Amazon for, you know, maybe 10 bucks or less. And if you look at the, uh, the head here, um, what this is for, when you're building a server cage, so this is a limited, this is a limited, limited use tool. If I had had this when I, when I was in corporate America, I would have been really happy. Um, because what happens is when you're building a server cage, you have to put the cage nuts in because you know no one knows what your configuration is gonna be. So you put these cage nuts in that hold servers and switches and firewalls in place. And it's easy enough to snap them in. Uh, it's very hard to get them out uh, once they're in and you have to move them all the time. And so this little tool right here can get those uh, cage nuts right out really easy or actually, I don't know, maybe it's for getting them in. I can't even remember. I don't use it that much anymore, but uh, it's, 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 you can do both with it. You can get cage nuts in and get cage nuts out with this thing. And it is so useful. It'll save your fingers, read the reviews on the, um, on the, on the, uh, on the thing itself. It's like 10 bucks. Absolutely indispensable if you work with server cage and cage nuts all the time. So that's 
we're gonna say for tool five, it's gonna be kind of two tools. These are just a couple of lights that I uh, find really helpful. Um, this one is the uh, Lux Pro uh, LP351. Uh, I think it's about 15 bucks on Amazon. Show you some of the nice things about it. I put rechargeable batteries in it and I get a lot of time, probably like, I mean, I, I probably charge the batteries once a year, okay? Great for working on uh, computers. Uh, it's got a magnet at the bottom, so keep it away from hard drives. But if you're working on a nice steel case, you can just peg it to the side of a steel case and it's very versatile because you can move it around like this. It's also got a hook in the back. The hook is a little, it's a little hard. You kind of usually have to jam a screwdriver in to get the hook up, but you can, you know, hook it like if you're using it in a, like a car or a garage or something. It's got three settings. Uh, one is, is like a flashlight setting here where just these front lights, they're not very, um, they're a little dim. But then two is a very bright, this thing, you know, the front light, and three is a dimmer version of that if you're, you know, trying to save battery on it. Um, great tool, it's nice because you can adjust the angle and, you know, the, the, the setting for this light in front is very, very bright, so it's good for working on computers. Uh, but another one that's pretty much indispensable is this one. Uh, I mean, it's a nice, I mean, I bought this for camping. It's a black diamond, just headlight. They don't sell this model anymore. It's too bad, I, I, you know, the new models are so complicated. I mean, this one just turns on and off. That's all it does, on, off. That's all I want. You can't get them that just go on, off anymore. You have to get all these extra RGB features and strobe lights and all the rest of it. But this is an old one, I've used it for camping once or twice, but I've used it on many, many desktop builds and laptop builds when I just needed uh, both hands free and you know, you stick this on your head and you can uh, just get at everything. You get good light, uh, really good tool. So, um, you know, again, it's not that expensive. You can get these even nice ones for 35, 40 bucks now. I, when I bought this, it was like 120 bucks. And now for 30 bucks, you can get one that does 10 times more than this one does and it's brighter and everything else, but it's nice because it's just on off. Um, Here's another tool. Maybe I should have stuck this in my uh, uh, tool section. I probably should have. Um, it's just a box cutter. Uh, now, if you're in the IT business, you cut boxes almost every single day of your life. And a lot of days you're cutting 10 or 20 boxes if you're doing a big job. So um, I normally just used the traditional box cutter that's got the big handle and I have millions of them all over the place. But I just picked up this one and I thought it was nice because it's got a nice um, belt uh, clip on the back, a really big one too, so it'll it'll go over pretty much any belt, uh, no matter what you're wearing. Uh, and also I like that it's just retractable. Uh, you know, you just press a button, you get the full blade, you can do your job, you know, press a, oh, also, uh, it's very, very uh, easy to uh, change the razor blade on it. You just press this button, pull, you know, the blade comes out, another one, and it comes with five replacement blades. Um, so, you know, if you're in the IT business, you cut up a lot of boxes. And so this one is f fancy, F-A-N-C-I-I. -I. It was, I think, 13 bucks, well worth it. Nice tool. This I'm kind of throwing in as a bonus. Um, most most, it's like an honorable mention tool. It's, it's not essential, but it has bailed me out enough times that I keep one with me on jobs. Um, most computers don't come with CD drives anymore. And you do run into the occasional scenario where someone has an old disk of an old program that they still use, uh, or, or you just plain, maybe you have a slow internet connection and you don't feel like downloading a 500 megabyte or a, a one gigabyte install file that's gonna take 18 minutes when you get a disk sitting right there that does the same thing and you can do it in a minute. Um, so this is just a USB DVD ROM. It is, uh, this one's an LG, I believe. Um, save the box because these things can be fragile. And uh, so, you know, because I'm taking it with me everywhere I go, uh, you know, the box kind of provides a little bit of shock absorber uh, for it. Um, but it served me very well. I use it a couple of times a year, but when I do need it, it's a, it bails me out pretty good. So um, maybe have one of these on you. So now we're gonna get into some software tools that I like. Uh, so I'm gonna switch over to the, the computer and we're gonna look at those. So most of you have probably heard of this one by now, Ninite.com. And what this does is it allows you to put an installer together of a lot of the most common programs that you'd be putting on a PC. Uh, and it's great for new builds, it saves a lot of time, but you can definitely use it for existing builds as well. Uh, just a one-stop one shop to put lots of the most common programs on a computer in a short time frame. So, uh, great tool right here, Ninite.com. Okay, so here you go. This is another great resource called mxtoolbox.com. 
And this one's a little more technical. It's for troubleshooting email issues. Uh, you can look up, you can do an MX lookup to see which uh, MX records, which mail servers a domain is pointing to if you need to know where they're pointing to. You can check a domain blacklist here. So if your uh, emails are always going to spam or a client's emails are always going to spam, you can see if they've been blacklisted. These are third party uh, spam monitoring services that if they blacklist you, you got a problem, you got to get off that blacklist so you can check them. You can uh, analyze email headers here. This is a little more technical, but uh, every email has hidden uh, mumbo jumbo called headers that show the true path the email took through servers and where it really came from. It's very helpful with spam emails if you need to prove to a client where an email truly came from. Uh, you can see these are all the servers that it went through. This is just an email from YouTube, but those are all the servers that went through uh, before it was delivered to mine. And then as you go down, you can see truly where the email actually came from, like what, what the exact email address that it came from and where it was delivered to and the subject and all that stuff. So um, header analysis, it's, you know, it's really hard to do. This tool just makes it a lot easier. So it's a great tool for all those uh, things. So mxtoolbox.com, they have a paid service, but I've never needed it. You can pretty much do everything you need to do for free on this. So check it out. I've been using it for 10 years. It's been a real lifesaver. For bootable USBs, it's Rufus every time. Uh, this is a great program. It's free. It's been around a long time. It's super easy to use. You just, you know, lo you, know you, you put in a USB, you locate your ISO for whatever Windows or Linux or whatever it is you need to burn. Just hit start, it runs quick enough, and um, you, you get your bootable USB. Works every time it's tried, and uh, I really can't recommend this program enough. All right, guys, so for IP scanners, I like this one called Fing. It's on iOS and Android. There's no Windows install for this, so we have something separate for that. It's great, you download the app, you put it on your phone, you get on uh, a Wi-Fi in a new network and you just do a scan and you can pretty much find every device by IP address and MAC address and uh, host name. It actually works better than a lot of the Windows-based uh, IP scanners that I use. So uh, I've been using this for a long time, it's always been great. Um, so iOS and Android, look for Fing. For Windows, it's Advanced IP Scanner, that's the one I like, Advanced-IP uh, Scanner. Uh, Got com. It's a free download. It works easy enough. You know, it's it's you know you get what you pay for. It's a free app. Sometimes you have to do multiple scans to get it to work, but it's got a simple interface and uh, works just fine for me. Okay, so this is the last one I'm going to mention. Uh, network tools. It's network-tools.com. I used to use this a lot when I first started out. I don't use it so much anymore, but I still wanted to give it like an honorable mention. It's got a lot of different tools here. You can see ping, trace, route, who is. Um, those are the main ones that I would use it for. It's got a spam blacklist. It's not, not nowhere near as comprehensive as, as uh, MX tool, Toolbox for that. But anyway, you can put an IP address or, uh, or a domain in there. I, I mainly use it with, uh, for a who is search. Uh, that's what I used to use it for the most, just to find out what uh, registrar or a domain name is with. So like I said, I don't use it that much anymore, but I still wanted to give it honorable mention because it was something I used to use a lot. It's a free tool and you know, it might bail you out if you, if you need one of these somewhere along the line. So that's it, network-tools.com. So that's it, those are my top 10 or 12 so uh, tech tools that I like. Please let me know what you think, was that helpful? And also please let me know what tools that you use. I'm always curious because there's always somebody that's got some tool for something that I've never seen before. Uh, you know, I found most of these, you know, some of them I found myself, but then some of them I, you know, somebody just showed me one day and I was like, how has this been here forever? And I didn't know it existed. So, uh, so again, um, please like, subscribe, and let me know which tools that you use for this, this kind of stuff that maybe I can uh, pick up some, some pointers from you. Thanks a lot.